What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to do image segmentation using k-means clustering. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to perform image segmentation using k-means clustering in Python today. And what this basically means is that we're going to get images like these two here, the doc.jpg and the flower.jpg, and we would segment them into n different clusters. So if I say, take this image and cluster it using two different clusters, what would happen is the image would be reduced down to the two most important colors of this image. So for example, in this case, most likely it would, it would be the dark gray background and the gold brown uh, foreground. So we would lose a lot of detail because we would end up with two clusters, meaning two colors, and every single pixel in this image will be assigned to either cluster A or cluster B. And of course, I can do the same thing with three clusters, four clusters, five clusters, and so on. And the more clusters I have, the more colors I have, and the more colors I have, the more details I have. And you might be asking now, okay, why do this in the first place? Why would I want to cluster an image so that I can lose quality? Uh, you can have a number of different reasons uh, for, for which you want to do that. So first of all, you could do this as a pre-processing step for computer vision tasks. So for example, you could say, I want to perform object detection or any other computer vision task where I need more simplicity. And instead of feeding the detailed pixels into the algorithm, I want to have a very basic version with five colors where I have the most important distinctions being made, but I don't need all the, dis uh, all the photorealistic details. I just need the basic outlines and the basic colors. That would be one way or one reason to do this. The other reason would be, for example, to just compress the image. So if you use not five clusters, but maybe 50 or 70 clusters, you would get an acceptable level of detail for a couple of images. And you would have, uh, you would need less megabytes or kilobytes to store the image because you have less detail. But still, sometimes if you if you use enough clusters, you won't even notice the difference. So this is why we do that. Now let's talk just briefly a little bit about how we do that uh, on a theoretical level. I'm not going to go into the details of k-means clustering, uh, k-means clustering, because I plan to do a video k-means clustering from scratch, the same way I did it for regression and for uh, k neighbors classification. But I want to give you at least a very basic understanding, a theoretical understanding and intuition what is happening behind the scenes. And for this, I'm going to use my paint here. And in general, when you use uh, k means clustering, what you have is you have a coordinate system. Now, this is not going to be a beautiful coordinate system. In this case, let's say we have two dimensional data. So every data point is x and y an x y tuple. So a point in a coordinate system. And now let's say I have a bunch of data points here and a bunch of data points here and a bunch of data points here. And then what I want to do is I want to say, okay, I don't have any labels for those. So this is not a classification task. I don't know that this is class A and this is class B and this is class C or anything. Those are just raw unlabeled data points. And what I can do now with k-means clustering, and I'm not going to go into the details of how this works, especially also because I have a video actually on uh, k-means clustering and what it does and how to use it in Python. Essentially, you can think about this as um, finding the centers of gravity here. So you have, let's say we want to say uh, n clusters, in this case, is three. So we want to have three clusters, go ahead and find the best three clusters. And then we would just initialize some random points here, being the centroids for the clusters, and then through a couple of iterations, through the k-means algorithm, we would end up somewhere here in the cluster middles with those uh, centroids, and it would find these clusters. Now, when you run it again, you might end up with different clusters, especially because real data doesn't look like this, but it's oftentimes uh, very unclear. So in this case, it's very easy to spot the three clusters. We have this one, we have this one, and we have this one. And it's very, very easy to say that uh, they're quite distinct. Now, this is the basic idea of clustering, finding groups that belong together. Now, how is this relevant for image segmentation? Very simple. Let's say we have now an image of, I don't know, some person here. And of course, we would have, uh, I didn't want to start that. Let me just go back. Uh, let's say I have different colors here. So maybe I have a red sword and maybe I have uh, a banana in this hand. And I don't know, maybe I have a blue hat or something. 
uh, this image would contain pixels. So it would be, for example, let's say 64 times 64 pixels. And these pixels uh, have three values. So we would have R, G, B, for example, red, green, blue, every single pixel has red, green, blue. So you could also say, using different language that every pixel is in a sense, a point in three dimensional space. So you would have R, G, B, and every pixel is some point in space. Now, what we want to do now is we want to take all the pixels and we want to cluster them based on similarity. So looking at the dock image, this would mean, for example, take this pixel, take this pixel, this one, this one, this one, this one, and group them together in two clusters. Now, most likely, as I already mentioned, all these gray and light gray and dark gray and black pixels would probably be quite similar, would be quite close together, mathematically, speaking of the Euclidean distance, this is what we use in k-means clustering, basically just the Pythagorean uh, theorem distance is what I some, sometimes like to call it. So basically, you just say, if I have, um, if I move into the x direction, a certain number, if I move into the y direction, a certain number, this here would be the Euclidean distance. So the square root of x squared plus y squared. But I said, I don't want to go too much into the mathematics. This works also for n dimension doesn't work uh, only for x and y It works for x, y, z and for 50 dimensions as well. But in this case, what we would do is we would take every pixel and we would compare the pixels. And we would say, okay, those are quite similar. And those are quite similar. So we have the two classes. Uh, and the, these two classes have a centroid, the, the center of gravity that we talked about previously. So if I have a bunch of pixels here, and a bunch of pixels here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce all of them to the same color. So all of those are going to be this. And all of those are going to be this. Now, this is not red and yellow. This is the center of gravity of this class uh, cluster. And this is the center of gravity of this cluster. So maybe you have here some gold brown, some brown, some uh, gold, some orange or something, all of this will be reduced to this one color here. And of course, the more clusters we have, the more different colors we have, the more different centroids we have. That is the theory. Now, I hope this was not too uh, boring or complicated for some of you. So let us get now into the code where things are going to be easier because we don't really have to do any of that stuff manually, we can just call the k means clustering. Um, it's not a classifier. So the k means algorithm, we can create an instance and we can do the clustering on the data, which is the image, and then we can uh, see what the segmented image looks like. So we're going to start by saying import matplotlib as MPL. And import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. And then from sklearn.cluster, we want to import k means and of course, if you don't have these installed, pip or pip three install scikit dash learn and matplotlib. Those are the two packages that you need. And later on for the outputting of the compressed images, we're going to also use OpenCV dash Python. So install these three packages for the video today. Those are the installs. So those are the imports. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to load our image, for example, the doc.jpg by saying image equals MPL dot image dot read doc.jpg. And then we can just say um, plt dot show image to display the image in this Jupyter notebook here, you can see this is the doc. And uh, we can also look at the shape. So if we say image dot shape, and we run this, you can see that it is 640 times 960, with three dimensions being RGB, the three colors. So we have this many pixels here. So 640 times 960. All of these pixels are three dimensional data points, as we can see here. Um, and what we want to do now is we want to take that data, we want to flatten it at least these two dimensions, you want to uh, make them into just a bunch of different pixels with uh, three different coordinates, and then we want to use k means clustering to cluster the individual pixels. So what we're going to do is we're going to say x is going to be equal to image dot reshape 
And now we're going to use negative one to basically combine these two into uh, into one dimension into one axis. And then we're going to keep three. So now if I say x dot shape, we can see it's um, 614,400 pixels with three coordinates with three values RGB. And what we want to do now is we want to just use k means. So we're going to say k means equals k means n clusters. We're going to start with two so that you can see what we were talking about all the time. And then we're going to also say n init being equal to 10. The only reason I set this manually is because uh, if I don't do this, I'm going to get a warning message that I'm not setting the default parameter, or actually, I'm not getting the warning message. Okay, so let's just not set it. Uh, it basically just tells us how many times we're going how many times we're going to initialize uh, the centroids uh, randomly before we actually get uh, get an actual clustering result. And now we're going to say k means dot fit x. Oh, here I get it. Okay. So let's just use it n init 10 because in future versions, it's going to be set to auto. But let's just go ahead, k means dot fit x. And then what we're going to do now to actually get the segmented image is we're going to say segmented image is equal to k means dot cluster centers underscore k means dot labels, I think, underscore. And then segmented image equals segmented image dot reshape. And we're going to shape it back into this shape of the image that it had in the first place. And now all we have to do is we need to say PLT im show segmented image, and we need to divide by 255 to get values between zero and one. And here you can see what the result of this looks like exactly what we said, we have two different colors, we have the background, which is kind of dark gray, uh, almost black. And then we have this gold brown type of color for the dog itself. So you can see those are the most important colors. This is you have two important colors. And those two colors that we see here are the center of the two different color categories, you could say. And the more clusters I add here, the more detail I'm going to get in the image. So if I say, for example, give me five clusters, I'm going to get five different colors, meaning more detail, as you can see here. And I can also do this with 50. I think it's going to take longer. But I can do this with 50 as well. And after some time, I'm going to get the image. The more clusters you have, the more time you you will uh, need to run this, the longer you will need to run this. And here you can see that it almost looks like nothing changed. And I'm not sure if we're going to get a significant compression here if we write this to an image. So let's just go ahead and try to see what happens. Uh, we can basically just say import CV2. And we can say CV2 im write. Now, first of all, we need to get the image. Or actually, we we have the image already. So we have image and we have segmented image. So we're going to say image write image one dot PNG. And we're going to use um, CV2 dot convert color. Because uh, OpenCV uses the BGR uh, color scheme. So blue, green, red, and we're using RGB, which is red, green, blue. So this is just going to be swapped and we're going to have different colors. So we're going to just convert the image to CB2 color underscore BGR to RGB. And we're going to copy that and we're going to do the same thing for image two and for the segmented image. Now for the segmented image, we need to say S type and I think let me just see what the correct type was here. U int eight. For some reason, it doesn't work if you just keep it the way it is. And now we should have the two images being put out here. Can I refresh this? There you go. So we have image one, and we have image two. And you can see that there is some difference here in the detail level, but it's not too big. Uh, now let's just see how how much difference in size we have here. So if I go to programming, Python current, then we have image one being 622 kilobytes and this one being 417 kilobytes. So a little bit of compression 
um, is happening here. And if I reduce this number here to 20, for example, then of course, we would lose a lot of detail. But you will probably see a larger compression. So we have now 622 and 309. So less than half of the size. Um, and if we compare the quality, yeah, you can see that it actually doesn't look too much worse than the previous one. So 20 or 50 doesn't make that much of a difference. However, I think for the flower, it's a little bit more clear. So if I go and do the same thing for flower JPEG, then this is the image. And if I run this now with two, first of all, you're going to see that this doesn't look good at all. As far as I remember, there you go. So you don't really see what's happening in the image. Now, I think that this is even too little for in for for an object detection, because the thing about the rows is it's not enough to just get the shape, you need to get a different, uh, the different types of red, because otherwise you don't see the structure here. But if I change this maybe to 10, we should get something that looks a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, you can at least see it's a rose now. And maybe an object detection algorithm will be satisfied with that. But here you can see 600. And here you can see 97. So this is much smaller. But usually this is not the most important use case. So usually you don't want to do this necessarily to compress an image. It is more like a pre processing step or some um, step to analyze something. If you have some image, you can reduce it down to essential 10 colors to the 10 essential colors to the 10 essential features, you could say, to then do some analysis here. And yeah, this is how you do image segmentation using k means clustering in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.